Hi everyone, this is a quick video giving an overview of the new Eileen Hull Chapter 2 release for Sizzix. Um, you may remember in Chapter 1, Eileen brought out this fabulous folio journal, which creates this beautiful size journal. Um, now, in Chapter 1, she brought out the folio journal, the mandala, and the die set that makes the pages and pockets. I am going to run through those just in case they're new to you at this point. Um, now, let me just explain what I'm going to do because I'm going to do two videos today. This first video is going to be an overview of Eileen's Chapter 2 release, and I'll show you everything in this journal. But I'm not going to actually um, die cut anything. I'll do a separate video showing how to put them all together. But I it, I didn't want the video to be too long. And I know that some people will just want to see what releases Eileen's got and see a finished sample. If you want more detail and you want an actual step-by-step -step of how to use it, then click on the next video. Um, because in that one, I will actually assemble some of these elements. So, But I thought better to, to split it in two because not everyone's going to want that much detail. Some of you are just going to want an overview. So that's what this video is. So let's have a quick overview of the chapter one and then I'll show you the chapter two new dies that coordinate with it. So we've got the folio journal die. It's a big die. It's a big XL, which means that if you're using the standard size big shot, you are going to need extended cutting pads because this is, as you can see, quite a long die. And what you do is cut it twice. I don't know how well you can see on camera here since this is sort of black on black, um, but you've got the spine and then the whole journal. You've also got two extra bits. You've got this element here, which is used to sort of box in the flaps as such. So it, it's a, an element that sort of closes this area off and you can do it top and bottom if you want to. So you've got that and then you've also got a little charm holder which you can attach to the holes on the spine and then you can attach charms or beads, whatever you want to. So to assemble the folio journal, you would die cut twice and then you overlap the spines to create your journal. Now, the beauty of overlapping the spines and assembling it this way is obviously you've got this great length by having it cut twice because obviously you are limited to the size of the die. Um, so it's a way of getting around that. But it also means that you can choose how chunky you want your journal to be um, because however much you overlap these two, you know, I've overlapped the three over the three below. But if you want a journal that's just one thick you can chop it off at one and overlap them or you can go anything from one to five spines so you can have a really chunky um, journal with five notebooks in if you want the other beautiful thing about this is that you've got um, the flaps and they give you a lot of possibilities for different designs really you can, if you just want a straightforward journal you can chop off from here onwards and just have it as a little book. Equally, you could maybe chop off uh, the back one, keep the front one. So there's different ways of playing around with it, which I really like. The other thing to mention is about the spine. We're gonna touch on pages in a second because there is a die that creates the pages and that's what I've done here. But if you don't want to add your own pages, because you've got those holes, you can just thread elastic through and then slide pre-made notebooks in um, so that gives you the option to do that as well. So let's show you the other die set that was in chapter one. This is the folio page pocket and flowers. So you've got this die that creates the pages. Now it not only creates a page, if you just die cut it as it is, you will get a lovely page that's obviously the perfect size. Now you might be thinking, well, I could quite easily just use a paper trimmer to cut a page but you you do get lovely sort of rounded edges um it's almost like a beveled finish when you use a die so that's kind of you know one thing that's an advantage to having the die the other thing is that Eileen has cleverly put these little notches on so if you take a piece of cardstock and fold it then line up your fold with those notches you won't cut here and that means that you get a folded, so you basically got two pages. So if you are using elastic and you want to just slide your own pages in under the elastic, you can cut as many as you want to with that method. 
and fill it up, which is great if, um, you know, if you're creating an art journal or something and you want to be using watercolour cardstock for your pages. It's great that you can do that and create your own. So that's the page. You've also got two pockets, one that's a straightforward pocket that you would stick down on two sides, then you can tuck elements in. The other one has the extra um, crease lines so that you can fold and tuck it. So if you didn't want to stick it onto um, the front of your page, say, for instance, you can put your adhesive on these folds and then you would tuck those behind. I hope that makes sense. So two different variations of a pocket there, which is really useful. And then you've got a few floral elements. You've got some flowers and leaves, um, which are great for decorating. And obviously those can be used for card making, lots of other things. They're not specific to this journal die, really. And then there's one other die that Eileen brought out in chapter one, and that was the mandala. Now, this is a fabulous, intricate die, creates this lovely mandala design. It's perfectly sized for the folio journal so that it, it fits nicely on the front. But obviously, this could be used anywhere. Great for card making. The other thing about this is the design of it lends itself really well to making a stencil from. So here you can see I've cut one from paper, popped it on the front, and then I've just put some texture paste over to give a bit of a rustic, textured feel to my page so very versatile die that one so that was what Eileen brought out in chapter one now in chapter two she's kind of extended the accessories that are going to go with this folio now I say go with this folio they actually will go with any journal die you might have so um, you know if you've got any of Eileen's previous journals then these are going to be a great addition for those so we've got two die sets the book binding and label and then the waterfall so let me start with the book binding and label this die set is basically going to create a spine so if you want to add your own pages to your journal if I tip it this way, you'll probably see easier actually. You've got this spine and you just attach your pages to each of the spines. So it'll give you five. Depending on what size journal you're using, you can repeat and, and stick more than one in. And what it does is you die cut it and it gives you all the score lines. So if you then work your way along folding it in a kind of concertina, you will end up with this which is the perfect spine for your book. Um, you would just then need to attach. I would use red line tape to stick this in because obviously you do really want to make sure this is firm and not going to come out. Um, another thing to mention with this is that this is sized for the folio. Obviously, it's just the perfect height to go in your spine here. However, if you're using perhaps one of the older journals that, that are taller, you've just got to cut another one and trim it where you want to, you know, work out how much extra you need and then just cut a piece off, assemble it, and then you can just line it up perfectly with this one and, and get whatever size you want. Equally, if you want a chunkier book, you can just make a couple of these and snip it, you know, with however many more extra pages you need. So this gives you five, but obviously you, you can configure it to however however many pages you need. So that's the spine. You also get this handy little label die, which is just a nice little extra. It looks nice if you perhaps want to put a detail on the spine of your book. I used it here as a little uh, tab for my pages. I thought that would be quite nice. It'd be quite nice actually to do a whole load in different colours. Um, as you flick through, it would be nice to have it in a rainbow or something. So that's just a really nice little extra. So that's the book binding and label set. And then the waterfall set is much more than just a waterfall, actually. <laughs> You've got the elements to create the waterfall, which are these two dies here. So this one creates, let me show you the waterfall in action. So I've stuck one in here. So this one creates this piece here and it basically folds over so you can attach it. And then the other die gives you little panel to go on the front so you can decorate the front and all you would do is cut however many you need for the space and line them up now i like to cut out a piece of card first because it's much easier to know you're keeping these straight if you're lining them up with the edge of something 
So, um, but in the next video, I will actually make one so you can see how I do that. But that's the principle of that. So that's the waterfall element. And of course, this isn't limited to journaling. You could use this on a card front if you wanted to. Next up in the set, I've got this lovely little scallop. Now this does fit nicely with the waterfall, you know, if you wanted to create some little details for your waterfall. But it's also just a really handy, nice little extra element. It would look really nice, say, on the front of a journal with a name above it or something just as a little banner. Um, just really useful. These three dies create slots. So again, not limited really to, to this particular journal. These will work with anything. You can see here I've just created a little rectangle of card and put two slots in it and that instantly creates pockets where I can pop some tags in. You've got three different sizes here so you can put little slots in anywhere really. You could, I think I've got one, yeah here it is, where I've cut two tags and then put a slot in the top one so that creates a little area to pop something. So think of your journaling, your scrapbooking, where you might want to be popping tickets and little bits of ephemera in. That's really handy. But another use for these is I haven't used it here, but if I wanted to for my waterfall, I could perhaps if I were mounting them to a piece of card, I could have a slot at the top there for the ribbon that comes round to sort of feed through. So lots of different ways to use those. Um, think of your fastenings for your different journals. You could create a slot to have ribbon coming through, you know, to tie your journal together. So, so many different uses for those. They're gonna, they're gonna be dies you're gonna be using again and again. And then finally in this set, we've got three different tags, great sizes. Obviously these are just useful, tags are always useful. Um, just for simple things as putting on gifts but um, for journaling they are great and particularly when you've got all these other elements um, where you can be creating tags that you can slot in different areas and, and create pockets and things so you've got three tags and then you've got two reinforcers for the top so you can have a nice um, contrasting colour for that so that is an overview of the dies and I'll leave this video here. I'll just run through in this finished sample to show you how they all work, but then skip to the next video and we'll actually see them in action. So we've got the waterfall element here. You can see we've got the spine. We've got the pages were created with that page die. I've used the tags. I've used the slots. I've used the mandala to decorate and I've used the flowers on the front. So I've kind of incorporated all of those dies into this particular sample. And in the next video, we'll go through and we'll actually put, put them to use on a journal. So hopefully that's of interest to you and you can skip forward to the next video. Thanks for watching this one. And I will also put links in the description box on YouTube to all of these products on different sites. So um, depending on where you are, and now I have viewers in the UK and in the states and all around the world actually so i'll try and put a few different shops there for you to find these if you are interested in buying any of them thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon